Can we really know God's will for us? How do we align our will with God's will? These and other questions are we are going to discuss today as we continue to journey together in seeking wisdom. My name is Lauren Welch. And I'm John Shemitek, and we're listening for clues. We've had a couple of episodes. The first one was about King Solomon and how wisdom came to him as a gift. And last time, we looked at the story of Nicodemus and Jesus as they were talking about wisdom and made an understanding about how wisdom and knowledge are related and how they're not related. And today, we're going to turn our attention to will, another aspect of wisdom, seeking wisdom, the costly perfume. This is a story that is told in all four Gospels. So it's an important story to to, uh, read and ponder and understand, I think. John and I have chosen the uh, John 12, 1 through 8, John's version, um, John 12, 1 through 8. This is a story of Jesus going to Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house soon after he had um, raised Lazarus from the dead. And he and his disciples and other people came. They were sitting around the table. And Mary comes out with a costly perfume made of pure nard, which at that time was used for burial and for calming uh, people. So she brought it out and started anointing Jesus' feet and wiping his feet with her hair. The disciples did not think that that was appropriate. And it was Judas Iscariot in John's gospel that speaks up and says, you you could have sold that for 300 denarii, lots more money, and given to the poor. Why didn't you do that? Jesus says, leave her alone. She has bought this for my burial. You will always have the poor with you. You will not always have me. What struck me, John, in this in this reading, in this scripture, is the difference between Nicodemus and Mary. Nicodemus came to Jesus seeking wisdom, wanting to know more, wanting to understand what he was saying, um, and sat at Jesus' feet and listened, and I think went away wiser. Um, We know that he grew. Mary has been following Jesus throughout his ministry. Uh, There's another story in scripture where she sat at Jesus' feet with the men. And um, it was her sister at that time who was upset with her for not helping cook and serve as she was doing. So Mary has had the time to, to listen to Jesus, to know Jesus, and to integrate his wisdom and his way of being into her body and mind and spirit and heart. And so she was able to act, and I think boldly, she was able to act knowing that Jesus would be okay with what she was doing, no matter what anyone else would would think, no matter what her sister might think, no matter what the disciples or other friends who were there at the dinner party would think, she knew that Jesus would be okay because she, she knew that Jesus would understand that what she was doing was showing her respect, her love, and her devotion to him, um, especially after he had just uh, raised it, her brother from the dead. She was doing something that was, um, I I think it took courage for her to do it. Uh, But I think she had a knowing that it would be okay. Um, 
this is something that uh, actually uh, when guests came to the house of um, for a dinner for a dinner the pe people would wash their feet with water in a towel usually <laughs> that was the hospitality that was a hospitable thing to do so mary was doing something that was um usual but she did it in a very exotic way yeah she she went beyond the uh beyond the norm and i agree lauren she this was a, a real act of courage she in my imagination on the story, she knew or would expect that uh, people would not uh, really approve of, of what she was doing. And yet there was something, and we don't know, it's, we just have to leave it to our theological imaginations. There was something that was pulling her, that was encouraging her, calling her, I guess might be a way we'd even say it, to show this act of extreme devotion and love to Jesus. And uh, that, I think, is the real amazing thing about the story. She was, you know, sometimes people might think of Mary as being rather meek, because she was the, uh, the, the non-busy one who sat at Jesus' uh, uh, feet and, and listened, and she wasn't occupied with many things like her sister was. But I think she was anything uh, but meek. I think that she was, uh, uh, she was quite bold, and she had a very strong will in the uh, best sense of that word. She, I would say she was strong-willed. And this is where I really believe that her will was what brought her to a greater wisdom about who Jesus was, even beyond what they uh, recognized at the raising of Lazarus. So it's uh, uh, it's really a, an amazing uh, an amazing kind of story. And I think it's it's great that we're focusing. Uh, uh, on Mary uh, today, and not quite so much on the uh, on the disciples and how they uh, uh, reacted. And she seemed to be a lot wiser about who Jesus was than uh, than all of his uh, followers that we see so often uh, through the Bible. And, you know, there's a uh, a painting that uh, we uh, you and I have chosen uh, to help us reflect. Uh, on this uh, story a bit more. And one reason, uh, I, before we even show the painting, Lauren, uh, one reason that I was especially engaged with it is the total focus in this painting is on Mary. Mm -hmm. And was there some, what was it about this painting? And I guess uh, we could we could show it now, so we don't have people in uh, suspense. Although, if you're listening to this rather than uh, watching it, uh, this is a painting by someone called Nigel Groom, and the name of the painting is the Anointed. So, um, uh, as as I was uh, well, Lauren, let me you know I asked you a question, and let me allow you to answer it. What was there first of all about this painting? that um, really inspired you to, uh, to say, yeah, this is the one we should use today? You know, it, for me, it was just Mar Mary's, the expression on Mary's face, it, it is very, for me, very loving, very, uh, it, it, you could see the care that she was taking with the mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the collars. I mean, the, co the boat, and I think, when I saw the picture, it was like, oh, my God, she really was bold to do this. It was the colors that was so bold. Huh. I mean, yeah. I, love, I love the colors. Yeah. Well, maybe if we took another look uh, uh, back at the picture, uh, uh, we, we yes, you're right. Look how vibrant that whole background is. And, of course, the disciples in this one are way in the background. You can't even, they look like they're outside. Uh, so they're kind of incidental. The other thing that's sort of amazing to me is that little star, which looks like the nativity star. I think, what's that doing there? But <laughs> looking at Mary and the, as you say, the expression on her face, this is a moment of extreme tenderness. And for me, it looks like she is almost, she's so calm. Mm -hmm. She's so comfortable. She's almost, I mean, she could be asleep, but I think she's just incredibly attuned to the presence of Jesus and very much aware of this gift of wisdom through her own exercising her own will that she is receiving uh, in this encounter with Jesus. 
Oh, I agree with you, John. I mean, I think at that point, they their, their spirits were just really connected. And um, I, I think Jesus probably actually really enjoyed that. <laughs> Who do it? Well, I know some people don't like their feet touched, but um, uh, you know, just think about wouldn't a great, you know, like reflexology is there? <laughs> that's what exactly. it is. Exactly, right? and, and that's what, and that's what it seemed like she was doing, even from the scripture, because th they were talking about the perfume, uh, that the perfume, the fragrance was filling the room, yeah. which probably made some of the men uncomfortable too. It wasn't just the cost. <laughs> <laughs> It was oh, her actions. This her is... actions, which were very sent. I think her actions were sensual, as well as tender. And I mean, I think I think that all of that was part of the boldness, but also part of the, knowing that it was okay. The will, no, knowing that it was okay, that it wasn't something inappropriate that Jesus would. Uh, would be upset about. And you know, I'm wondering, thinking again about the expression on Mary's face, if maybe that's a clue for us, that when your will is in connection with the divine will, which is always to show love, maybe that is the source where, that, where those two things intersect, your will and the divine will, maybe that's where wisdom sits. So maybe, you know, that might be one of the big lessons from uh, Mary anointing Jesus' feet. I, I think you're right on. I think there is a calmness when we know there is a calmness. There is a, a knowing deep within when we, when we are doing something that we feel we are called to do and that God is there with us. Um, yeah. And yes, I think you hit it right on the head. Yeah, yeah, we're hitting on the head a lot these days. <laughs> but anyway, Lauren, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I think we've had moments like that. I had moments like that where oh. we did know. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very few, but there've been moments. <laughs> there have been, and you're right; they're few and far between, but they do happen. Yeah, so I guess we're probably at the point of wrapping up uh, now, and I'd like to, first of all, thank everyone who's uh, hung in there with us and, and come to the um, uh, come to these uh, sessions. Uh, we have a whole set of videos that we're producing and are, will be published and are being published on our website, so please visit listeningforclues.com, uh, like, share, comment. Your comments would be so welcome. We would love to have this be a many-way conversation and not just a two-way conversation. So as we close today, uh, Lauren is once again going to read our uh, very uh, specifically chosen prayer by Rainer Maria Rilke. And after that, we'll have just a moment of mu music and meditation uh, with as we present the uh, icon holy wisdom. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them and the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday, far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer.